Hello, everyone. My name is Stephen Yellen. I am the founder of the Fluid Motion Factor Program. In March of 1975, I had an experience on the tennis court in a challenge match that changed my life. My background in sports is actually not in golf. It's in tennis. I grew up in Florida, uh, had a good career as a junior player. I was Florida State High School singles champion, member of the championship team, went on to play number one singles at University of Pennsylvania, was a member of the All Ivy team, and even had a win over John McEnroe in my college career. But in March of 75, I had an experience that changed my life. A deep, deep, the deepest zone experience that I have ever experienced in an intra-squad challenge match. And I had to figure it out. I had to understand why I had this experience on this day and not on any other days that I had played. And I had played a lot of matches in my career. After two or three days, I think it was the third day, I woke up and I figured it out. I knew exactly why I had that experience. And I'm going to tell you why right now. When you watch a tennis match, what do you see? You see one person hit a tennis ball, then another person hit a tennis ball. So you can define tennis as a series of shots, a series of motions. But what else is going on? Well, the person hits the ball, one person hits the ball, then they wait. Then the other person hits the ball, and they wait. So if you switch your attention from the person that is hitting to the person that is waiting, though you wouldn't do this, but if you did, you can define tennis as a series of waitings or a series of gaps. And as it turns out, fascinatingly enough, the quality of that gap will determine the quality of the shot. If there's an imbalance in the gap, that imbalance is going to show up in a split second in your motion, forehand, backhand, serve, whatever, volley. And what do I define? What do I define as imbalance? I define imbalance as how you are experiencing time. In the ultimate discussion, it's the experience of time which controls the motion, any motion. And if you're experiencing time normally, no imbalance, then you're going to, nine times out of 10, you're going to have a very fluid motion. If time gets distorted in that gap on that tennis court, how does it get distorted? It gets distorted by over anticipating something that has not yet occurred, even if it's going to occur in a fraction of a second. So when time gets distorted, you have an imbalance in the gap and that imbalance is going to show up in the motion. Let's switch to golf. Let's switch to golf. When you generate a motion in golf, when you swing in golf, there are two doors that are going to oversee your motion. One of these two doors. The first door, this is during the motion, the first door, door number one, is the prefrontal cortex door. Prefrontal cortex is the discriminating intellect in your brain physiology. It oversees all processes in the brain. It's also called the CEO of the brain. You don't want door number one to be active and overseeing your motion when you swing a golf club. That's when you micromanage. That's when it feels like you're overthinking. That's when it feels like you can't release the club and you're guiding the club. Also, you go in, usually you go into crisis management on the way down. You know that feeling. You know that space. It's not a good space. Door number two is overseen by the cerebellum. The cerebellum is the genius in the brain physiology when it comes to motion. It does two things. One, it smooths out emotion. And two, it has the ability to self-correct emotion. So what are the circumstances, whether door number one is chosen during your motion or door number two? Well, the question that has to be asked in order to answer that question is what is the environment the brain physiology has to experience before you pull that trigger in order for door number two to be chosen? It's a good question. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. That environment, that arena, 
can be summarized in one word, wholeness, wholeness. The brain physiology was designed to create fluid motion when you experience wholeness. Now, wholeness is a very abstract term. Essentially, it means the togetherness of all the parts, but let's make it concrete. Now, let's say you're on the course, you're setting up a shot. When you're setting up a shot, you take into consideration all the elements of the shot. The lie, the wind, the temperature, where you are on the round, what club you want to hit, how you want to hit it. Now, all of you have made a smoothie, regular smoothie, right? And when you make a smoothie, what do you do? You put a banana, raspberry, strawberry, you hit the blend button. Now, after you hit the blend button, if you could see the outline of the banana, you do not have a smoothie. So we're going to make a golf smoothie. We're going to put all these ingredients into a blender. If right before you pull a trigger, you haven't made a golf smoothie, meaning one element is overshadowing another element, don't hit it right don't hit it left, don't hit it short, then you do not have a threshold level of wholeness. You've broken wholeness, and chances are door number one is going to be chosen. But if right before you pull that trigger, you have made a good golf smoothie, meaning all the elements of the, of the swing of the shot are completely mixed together evenly, then chances are door number two is going to be chosen. So what happens is that if you have broken wholeness before you pull the trigger, time is ever so slightly distorted because you are over anticipating an action that has not yet occurred, even if that action is going to occur in a split second. And when that happens, this is before you pull the motion, if you have that over anticipation of something that has not yet occurred, occurring, then there's going to be a physical movement somewhere in your body. It could be in your hands tightening up, could be in your fingers, could be in your wrists, could be in your arms, could be in your shoulders, could be in your knees. But what that reaction, that means the PFC is online. The prefrontal cortex is online because what is moving your hands, your wrists, your arms, your shoulders, your knees, it's the PFC. And once the PFC is online, it's very difficult when you initiate that swing to go offline. So chances are it's going to be the dominant force as far as the subtle processes in the brain physiology overseeing your swing. So how, what's the remedy? What's the remedy to this? What can you do? to give yourself the best chance of not having the PFC online, of not over anticipating an action that has not yet occurred, and choosing or having chose, it's chosen for you, the cerebellum. Here's the technique that you signed up to get, okay? Finally, we're getting to it. I want you to set up on the range without a ball. And I want you to, I want you to Get over the ball, and right before you're about to pull the trigger, I want you to drop the club and stand up. Just stand up. And ask yourself, do my shoulders feel exactly the same as when I was over the ball and I was about to pull the trigger? Because shoulders, really, that's where the over-anticipatory reaction comes for most players. Chances are you won't feel the same. Chances are you're going to drop the club, you're going to feel much lighter. You're going to feel normal. <laughs> well, you want to feel normal before you initiate the swing, then door number two has a better chance of being accessed. You don't want to go into uh, our Navy SEAL, I'm going to get this job done, over-concentrating, over-determined, over-focused. That doesn't get the job done, folks. It doesn't get the job done. So you keep doing this. Over the ball, drop the club, stand up, ask yourself if your shoulders feel the same. You can't hit a ball until you drop the club, you stand up, and your shoulders do feel the same. Now we've set a baseline. Now we're doing something significant in your golf game. Because you're gonna to start to experience time normally. Now you're gonna hit a ball. But your only goal when you hit a ball is to see the quality of space before you pull the trigger. How are you gonna do that? You're gonna ask yourself, if I drop the club right now and stand up, I, obviously, hypothetically, you're, you're thinking this in your mind. 
uh, would my shoulders feel exactly the same? And when you feel they, they would feel exactly the same, you have the green light to hit the ball. If you do this uh, when you're hitting the ball, first few balls, and you feel that your shoulders would not feel the same, you back away. You're not ready to go. That is the most important that is the most important component of playing competitive, elite, consistent golf. Completely under the radar is the quality of space before you initiate the motion will determine which processes in the mind, because the swing doesn't control the swing, folks, okay? It's processes in the brain physiology that control the swing. And I just gave you two of the main. This will determine the quality of the motion. So this is your most valuable asset is understanding and creating this high quality of space before you initiate the motion. What separates ball strikers on the PGA Tour, LPGA Tour, top amateur players? It's not their swing. They all have great swings. It's the quality of the space before they initiate the motion. The great ones live in this world of smoothies. They live in this world of smoothies. Hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't met, read my book, Simplicity, I think you'll find it interesting. I sell a series of videos on my website, stephenyellen.com. But if you really want to change your game, if you really want to give yourself the best chance of reaching your potential in golf, you come and see me in Vero Beach. Happy holidays.